So how does winning an Olympic gold medal in golf compare to winning a PGA Tour event? Let's find out. Hi everyone, welcome to the Mobile Club Maker. I'm AJ, I hope you're having a wonderful day. So today I wanted to just do a quick look at what you get when you win an Olympic gold medal compared to what you get when you win a PGA Tour event. We're gonna look at three different things. We're gonna be looking at prize money, we're gonna be looking at points, and we're gonna be looking at perks. First off, we're gonna to need to sort of divide up PGA Tour events into a few different categories because not all golf tournaments are created equal. There's really four different sort of groups that you can put all tournaments into. First off, you've got your major championships, right? You've got the Masters, US Open, Open Championship, PGA Championship. Go ahead, put the Players Championship in that grouping too. Just below that, you've got uh, sort of your elite field events. So these are your World Golf Championship events. This is the Arnold Palmer Invitational, the Memorial, uh, just higher profile events that have uh, a little bit stronger feel to them. Okay, the next step down are basically your weekly full field PGA Tour stops. So these are things like RBC Heritage or AT&T Byron Nelson or uh, Riviera or John Deere or Pebble Beach or Honda or any number of other tournaments. These are your weekly full field tournaments. The fourth category are what's known as opposite field events. These are PGA Tour events that are going on at the same time as usually one of these more elite field events. First off, let's look at prize money. Now, when we're talking about the Olympics, obviously there is no direct prize money that comes with winning an Olympic gold medal. However, there is money in many cases that is being awarded to the athletes by the country that they are representing. So if you are an athlete from Singapore who wins a gold medal, you are gonna get paid $744,000 by, by that country's Olympic committee for that gold medal. So that is basically a million dollars in Singapore currency converted to US dollars. If you are a Hong Kong athlete, you will get $644,000 for a gold medal. If you're from Kazakhstan, $250,000 for winning a gold medal. Keeps going down from there, You've got countries like Russia that pays around $61,000 for a gold medal. The United States pays $37,500 for a gold medal. Uh, Canada pays about $16,000 for a gold medal. Australia pays about $15,000 for a gold medal. And if you're an athlete from Great Britain, well, they don't pay you anything. Uh, well, at least you've got the medal. Now, if we wanna compare that against what you win on a PGA Tour event, well, let's start off with that top tier, that being the majors and the players' championship. If you win any of those events, you're gonna be clearing over $2 million. Uh, the players' championship pays out the biggest purse for a win, which is about $2.7 million. Second to that is the US Open. It pays $2,250,000. And the other three, again, are all over $2 million. Going down from there, we move into the elite field events. Again, WGCs, things like that. If you win one of these events, you are going to be taking home something in the ballpark of around $1.8 million. Going down from there to your standard full field PGA Tour events, those are going to be somewhere in the ballpark of between say 1.1 and 1.4 million dollars for the win. The last category, that opposite field event uh, tournament, so something like the Barbasol Championship, those events are going to pay you around $600,000 for a win. So if we're gonna try and compare the Olympic gold medal uh, as far as what you get in prize money to a PGA Tour event, well, the closest thing is gonna be obviously that sort of opposite field event PGA Tour stop. Uh, of course, that's only gonna be a very good comparison if you are an athlete from Hong Kong or Singapore. Uh, if you're anywhere else, basically, well, it's not really a comparison. Next up, we're gonna talk about the points. Now, when we're talking about points and specifically FedEx Cup points, Compared, or as far as the Olympics goes, sorry, you don't get any points if you win an Olympic gold medal. There are no FedEx Cup points awarded. There are no Race to Dubai points awarded either, uh, but you get no points whatsoever for that. 
So to compare that, when we're talking about a PGA Tour win, if you win one of these top tier major events, you're gonna be getting 600 points. Now, if we're talking one of these elite field events, the FedEx Cup points you get for a win there are around 550. From there, you move into the full field events. So if you win the Waste Management Phoenix Open or the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am, you're gonna be getting 500 FedEx Cup points. Finally, we move down to the opposite field events. If you win one of these opposite field events, you'll get 300 FedEx Cup points. So obviously when it comes to the FedEx Cup and these points, there is no real comparison between the Olympics and a PGA Tour event because in one case you get them and in the other case, you don't. Now when it comes to official world golf ranking points, you do get points for an Olympic gold medal and you are awarded 50 points for that gold medal win. Now, when you win a major on the PGA Tour, you're going to be getting 100 world golf ranking points. If you win a WGC event or another elite field event, you're gonna be getting around 70 to 75 world golf ranking points. For your standard non-opposite field PGA Tour stop, you'd be getting around 50 official world golf ranking points. So very similar to that Olympics win. Finally, the opposite field events, you're gonna be getting around 25 world golf ranking points. Now these world golf ranking points are all sort of figured out based on the strength of field at a particular event. So if we're trying to compare the Olympics to a PGA Tour stop and sort of do as close to apples to apples as we can, the closest thing I could find was, you can see here, was the AT&T uh, Byron Nelson, where the strength of field is gonna be very similar and the world golf ranking points, again, because of that, is very similar. So we've talked about prize money and we've talked about points. Last thing, perks. These are the things that come along with winning one of these events. So when you win an Olympic gold medal, the biggest perk is going to be you have an invitation to the next four major tournaments. So if you win that gold medal, you have an invite to the following Masters, US Open, Open Championship, and PGA Championship. I am not sure whether you have an invite into the Players' Championship or not. I couldn't find that. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if you did, but I don't know that for certain. But that is definitely by far the biggest perk that you get. It's also basically the only perk that you get uh, when you win an Olympic gold medal. There is no further exemption beyond that. Now, if we're comparing these perks or these exemptions, obviously the majors are going to have the most robust set of perks. So if you win a major, if you win the uh, Masters, let's say, you are going to have a five-year PGA Tour exemption to get into basically any of the tournaments that you want to. Uh, beyond that, obviously, when we're talking about the Masters, you have a lifetime exemption into that tournament. So any year that you want to go play in the Masters, if you are a previous winner, you have that opportunity. Next, PGA Championship. And I didn't even realize this until I started to put this video together, but the PGA Championship is very similar to the Masters because again, you get the five year exemption on tour, but beyond that, you have that lifetime exemption to play in the PGA Championship whenever you want. So just like the Masters, you have an exemption to play as long as you feel like you wanna play in that event. The Open Championship, again, you have five-year exemption. In this case, it's a little bit different. You have a pseudo lifetime exemption, but really only until your life reaches the age of 60. Once you hit 60, that exemption runs out. Uh, the only exception to that is if you won the Open Championship when you were, say, 55, they would give you a 10-year exemption to the Open. So for most people, it's going to be you can play in the Open until you are 60 years old. Finally, the U.S. Open, again, slightly different. You do still have the five-year exemption on tour, but in this case, it is just a straight 10-year exemption. There is no lifetime exemption. Uh, lifetime exemption or any sort of age-related uh, exemption. It is just a straight 10-year exemption into the U.S. Open. Uh, just as a comparison, if you win an Olympic gold medal, you do not get to go back 
to the Olympics anytime you feel like for the next 10, 20, 60, whatever years, uh, it's just a one-time deal. If you win one of the elite field events, you're gonna be getting a three-year exemption. Beyond that, you're also going to have an invite into the Players' Championship, the Masters, the PGA Championship, and the Tournament of Champions. Next up is the weekly full field PGA Tour stops. And it is very similar to what you get in the elite field wins, only instead of three years, it's two years in this case. So you have a two year exemption, you get the Masters invite, you get the Players invite, you get the PGA Championship invite, and you get the Tournament of Champions invite. Finally, the opposite field events. And these events are going to be treated very similar to the full field events. The only big difference is going to be there is no Masters invite if you win. So again, here it's a little bit tricky to try and compare what that gold medal is worth versus a PGA Tour stop because yes, that gold medal does give you an invite into the next four majors, which is a big deal. But if you compare that to a major win where you're getting invited back to all those tournaments for five years and some of them for longer and invites into all the other PGA Tour stops, it doesn't really compare. It doesn't really compare with the lower stuff either because again, winning that gold medal does not give you any sort of PGA Tour status. So that's how the Olympic gold medal sort of size up against PGA Tour stops, at least on a quantifiable scale. Obviously, there's a lot of intangibles that go with a gold medal that we can't really measure because one person's view of the Olympics and what it's worth to them could be completely different from someone else. So the only way I could really do it is to look at what you actually get in far, as far as prize money, points, and perks, and how that compares. I would love to hear from you down in the comments down below. Where do you think the Olympic gold medal falls in this hierarchy of PGA or golf accomplishments? You know, where do you put it? Do you put it just below the majors? Do you put it in the middle? Would love to hear from you down in the comments, so let me know down there. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, please go down below, like, comment, subscribe, and also hit that bell icon so you can be alerted when I post new videos. I am on Patreon now, and you can find me at AJ Golf. I'm also on Instagram. You can find me there at Mobile Clubmaker. We will see you next time. Bye.